Welcome to another presentation by Tom Zaleski, Benchtop Editor for Dental Lab Products Magazine, Owner and Dental Technician at Matrix Dental Laboratory and Consulting. Today we're going to talk about simple and inexpensive products that project value. One company in particular that provides several of those types of products is Dental Creations. I found two other products that they have that I started to use and I wanted to share that with you today. It's all about value projection, people. Um, these are models that I made using the Wonderfill Wonderformer product and then used the Wonder Gloss and Admix to uh, mix the stone to put into the uh, boxed and poured impression, uh, boxed impressions, poured them with stone, and then use the glossing material, the, uh, the Wonder Gloss, to give it a finish. I want to show you about land, these land areas bubble-free, smoothness, all projects value. And value is what your customers buy, whether it's with a final restoration or with things that follow suit from the beginning. So if you start at the beginning with models and great-looking models, boxed and poured models, accurate models, finished models, bubble-free models, these types of things are the first step in projecting a value that separates you from your competition. We'll talk about Wonder Admix first. You use it in place of water and it acts as a debubbleizer. It also hardens the surface of the models and acts as a surfactant to allow stone to run into the impression without having to soak it with some sort of debubbleizing spray. You can use it for any uh, for all the dye stones and buff stones that are out there. I've been using it for both dye and buff stones, like I said, in place of water. When you buy the product, um, the, you get an empty bottle and you get the actual product itself which is a pre-measured amount for that bottle. The cool thing is that if you were to buy a strengthening solution or a solution uh, that you would mix with your stone ordinarily you would have to pay for the shipping for a gallon bottle. Well when you buy this material you buy just the syringe and weight and a very light bottle so um, it already starts to save you money in the fact that if you're already using mixing products like this, you're not paying for the weight in gallons. You make them right there on the spot. Again, you'll take the, you take the top off, you pour the material in or squeeze the material in with the syringe, and then fill this with water and shake it well. And every time you go to use it, you'll shake it uh, just like the first time that you added the material. You always want to make sure that it's thoroughly infiltrated into the liquid. And again, you'll proportionate it out when you pour your stone models or your dye models uh, according to your powder and liquid ratios. I use a scale. Uh, generally speaking, for most of my models, it's about 150 grams to 50 milliliters of liquid. I zero out my bowl add my powder, measure my liquid, always shake again well before I start to dispense it and uh, I generally would take a third bowl and pour the liquid in and then sift the powder in. You can pour the liquid into the powder however um, you have to really make sure that you get it to wet everything so it's always easier to pour the powder into the liquid. I show you this because I wanted to show you about the uh, measurements uh, and how to use a scale versus the milliliter beaker. Um, some of the applications that I like for it is, well, on the left hand side, first you'll see the Wonder Former, I'll use along with Wonderfill. Uh, I got a close up there, I wanted to show you that creamy consistency of the product. It's very bubble free, I, I vibrate it uh, before I, uh, uh, or while I'm uh, uh, mixing it to uh, pull up any powder, make sure it's nice and creamy. Uh, generally, I just pull to the sides of the bowl and then I'm ready to go. Uh, this was vibrated and, and poured in and you can just see the surface is extremely nice and creamy. I, I didn't use any debubbleizer, got no bubbles. Uh, another application for this product because it flows so well is uh, whenever you're using any kind of a flasking uh, arrangement where there is an open hole in the top and you have to pour the stone in and basically you're doing this blind. This here is an injection flask. Uh, for a flexible resin or actually for, um, for uh, like a success type system. Um, 
again, it's poured blind. Uh, there are several microwave flask systems out there that also, you, you also have to pour in from a blind hole once everything is closed and locked down. So because of the creamy consistency of this product, uh, I, and, it, and you pour it slow, um, I feel much more confident knowing that this close, I'm doing it blind, that I'm going to get, uh, I'm not going to get any bubbles in my uh, final product. Also, the AgMix reinforces the stones so that if you're one of these people that are making flexible resins, and most of us are, um, there's a lot of, of force and pressure uh, exerted on the models with injection, and it's always uh, suggested to use a fortified stone by using your buff stone of choice and the Dental Creations Wonder Admix, of course, you can reinforce the stone to uh, hold up to the compression forces of the uh, flexible resin injection. The surface as well also uh, is more abrasion resistant and uh, that works out well when we're uh, continually removing and placing a frame back onto a master model for adjustments. It doesn't abrade nearly as easy and if you'll talcum powder the abutments you'll even find that it'll slip over even easier. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about abutments and how we can uh, reinforce them and uh, not abrade them for fit while fitting in a minute or so here. Because we're going to talk about Wonder Gloss and Wonder Gloss is kind of when I first uh, encountered it, I thought it was kind of one-dimensional. Yeah, it adds a high gloss shine to opposing and study models, and that's really great, and, and I saw a benefit for that. But um, it also, when I started to use it, I also started to notice things like it prevented chipping again and, and staining of the models. Uh, there are areas of the model where we handle a lot, basically around the land areas on the facial of the models. Uh, it's handled quite a bit, and we tend to smear pencil if we have uh, names and markings on there, and they just tend to get dirty. Once I have this glossing material on, it um, tends to seal the model, and I can wipe it with a sponge really quick just to get off any kind of dirty uh, smudges or so forth on there. Works with all stones and plasters, and again, adds a high gloss. Um, one thing to remember about this product is that the models must be dry. I'll show you in a minute how I dry my models. Um, if you were to dry them normally, it could take as long as an hour and a half to two hours, but I use a little bit of warm air in two different ways that I'll suggest to you that you can dry these models in about 10 to 15 minutes so that you can then apply the material. But the, again, the models must be dry and never shake the bottle before you are all in this product, never shake the bottle when you're getting ready to apply it because it'll have bubbles in it and you'll get bubbles on the surface. You want this to lay perfectly liquid. Whereas with the AdMix, you would shake it before you mixed it with your stone to make sure the product was thoroughly mixed with water. This product here, you do not mix. You basic or do not shake. It comes in a liquid bottle. You'll take it out with the brush and apply it. No shaking because it'll, again, uh, apply bubbles to your model. It also adds less than one micron per coat. Uh, I feel pretty confident with two coats. Uh, in this application here that you're seeing is uh, many times I'll just coat the um, abutment teeth rather than the whole model because I just want to reinforce those from chipping and from abrading while I'm doing the fitting as I mentioned earlier. Using the AgMix and the gloss together gives you a really, really nice surface. And as I mentioned before, uh, if you dust it with a little talcum powder uh, when, you be, when this is all dry and you begin to do your fitting, you'll even have an easier way to slide those models on and off, uh, the frames off the models very easily. Um, also, this works well for chrome type models if you're uh, doing chrome fittings as well, along with that talcum powder will help keep from abrading the model during fitting. Here's that little, two little ideas. Uh, some people call me MacGyver, uh, and I kind of take pride in that because I'm always looking for products that uh, 
might be able to help us. They're not the conventional ones we use in the dental laboratory, but nonetheless, they work quite well. The one on the left here is basically a food dehydrator, which I use for other applications in my laboratory as well. It's a warm, subtle heat. It circulates very quickly. This dries extremely well, extremely quickly, because these models are lifted above on the rack, and so hot, or I should say warm air, circulates around the models and dries them from both the underside and the top rather quickly. Um, even a less expensive way to do it, to accelerate the drying of models, and I like to work on dry models to begin with, um, is that I got an old box from uh, a dollar store and took a doorknob hole cutter and cut a hole at the top and got myself a little ten dollar hair dryer. You'll notice I put two holes, uh, well I have a hole here and I have a hole here and that is because when the warm air runs into the box I want it to escape because if it builds up it backs up and it knocks off the thermal sensor on the uh, hair dryer. So I put a hole here and there's actually a hole on the other side uh, and what this allows it to do is warm air to travel over the top of the model. Now, the problem with this is that you'll need to flip the models over once they're warm on one side to dry them out on the other. Uh, and that's why I like using the one on the left, the food dehydrator works just a lot quicker. I can get a lot more in there. And um, if you follow the same protocols as I do with um, uh, coating our flasks with a separator, uh, I can also stick flasks in here once separators put on and those are warm and then I can continue to add warm coats to my flasks and then put them back inside the food dehydrator to keep them warm while I'm adding the coats. I find that the coats adhere to themselves better when the model is always warm for subsequent coats. You know, we always put it on when it's first warm to the touch, but I don't like to let it cool down from that point. I like to keep it warm and then add a second and maybe even sometimes a third coat. Uh, just to show you the application here was for names, pencil drawn on, and then a swipe of the Dental Creations Wonder Gloss seals that name uh, into the model. Now I've used uh, much more expensive products to um, to seal names in. That would be like air cured, uh, clear varnishes and so forth. Um, this is just a lot less expensive, a lot easier to put on there. You get the same benefits. Uh, I ran some fa a faucet over just to show you water running off of this. I mean if you scrub on it, sure, it'll start to it'll start to come off, but by and large you're not going to have this kind of a situation going on. Uh, during the course of setups and so forth. And that's what we're really trying to preserve is in the handling of the models, uh, the uh, smearing of the names, or just the, the untidiness of it all. It just starts to look really rank when your models have fingerprints all over it. So we want to have that value projection. This works extremely well. If you're a person who likes to do ridge compass, compass uh, tracings, ridge tracings with a compass, um, such as here, um, I like to seal that in also as well when I'm doing the tracing. So um, it works extremely well once you get that once you get that arc put in and you get your line set. Or even on the other side, you might want to put the tooth mold. Um, just a quick swipe of the Wonder Gloss material and you're good to go. And again over here on the right, again just to show you, once I've used the admix to construct the model, I then go ahead and use a coat of the Wonder Gloss, just so it's smooth, so I can uh, remove and replace the frame, uh, flexible type frame, even a chrome frame, while I'm doing the adjustments for fitting. Uh, again, just another nice tool. The models come to the doctors, not all abraded and scratched, and uh, they're nice and neat, and uh, they just have a great presentation to them. Uh, I love it when guys hold on to my models just because they don't want to get rid of them because they look so nice. Um, and that's a, a complement to what we're trying to accomplish, was, which is to instill a value in our products. So here's, that was a couple of things to go along with the article that you'll be seeing out there regarding the Dental Creations Wonder Admits and Wonder Gloss. If you get a chance, or if you do like what you saw and you get a chance, um, and would like to request a free sample of either the Wonder Admix or the Wonder Gloss, give them a call at this number and ask to talk to Shelly. And Shelly will take care of making sure that you get some samples and give them a whirl. Because you that know me know that the greatest thing I feel that a technician has in order to make 
um, a sound judgment is to actually have product in their hands so you can give it a try and you can see exactly how well it works and that way when you make a purchase you can justify it because you've already had a chance to understand how it works and how well it works so again I just wanted to thank you for uh, coming by this channel this YouTube channel and hope to see you again soon and uh, all the best have a great day